Douglas Cooling and Heating. Serving the Birmingham area for 38 years. 988-3706. That's Douglas. I'm James Spann. This is the morning edition of the Weather Extreme video for Wednesday, the 23rd of February. Got some active weather coming up. Two potential severe weather events in the next seven days. So let's get right to it. Tis the season for active weather. Uh, first off, the uh, Skycam Network at 5 a.m. coming from downtown Clanton. All is quiet there. Pretty chilly out this morning, but the colder readings are clearly north of there. Like here, Haleyville, they're sitting at uh, 30. They're below freezing up there in uh, uh, Winston County up in northwest Alabama. Nice shot there of uh, downtown Haleyville. Let's go back the other way, down south to Greenville. Greenville, Alabama. Butler County, the Camellia City. Uh, there's the uh, water vapor satellite shot this morning, and pretty impressive uh, trough out there near uh, Los Angeles, and that will be sweeping through the uh, deep south uh, tomorrow night to Friday morning with potential for very active weather. The polar jet is way up north, but uh, we, we've got the fringe of a pretty cold air mass, and again, it's below freezing this morning at 5 o'clock at Cullman and Haleyville. But look at Birmingham, 15 degrees warmer than Coleman. Numbers just all over the board. Uh, Gadsden, 36. Tuscaloosa, 38. The, the Shelby County Airport, the warmest spot, they've got 46 there. And again, another example of why this is not a one-number kind of place when you forecast morning lows. Around the nation, the really cold air is over New England. Uh, it was pushed more east than south, and, and that's good for us. And again, you can see that tongue of warmer air coming up through Texas in advance of this next storm system. And ahead of that, we have flash flood watches up now, uh, basically from Memphis to near Cincinnati. And uh, up there, they could see some pretty good rain. And we'll take any rain we can get. We sure need it down here as uh, rainfall deficiencies are running in the two and a half to five inch range for the year. It's getting awfully dry. Many wildfires are in progress out there. Oh, boy, goodness, look at uh, the day two convective outlook. All of a sudden now a moderate risk of severe weather. Uh, the risk is centered right around Memphis over toward Little Rock. And surrounding that, a slight risk from Dallas-Fort Worth up to Louisville and Knoxville and Birmingham and Tuscaloosa. And, uh, again, this is valid from uh, 6 o'clock tomorrow morning until 6 o'clock Friday morning. And along with the uh, chance of severe weather comes some big rain. That's why there's a flash flood watch in effect up there. This is suggesting some three-inch rains uh, from Memphis back up toward uh, uh, Cincinnati. And around here, the amounts taper off from about uh, one inch near Huntsville down to a quarter inch on the Gulf Coast. And this is valid through Sunday evening. So this is our system that's coming in here tomorrow night. This does not count the system that will be coming in here early next week on Monday. All right, let's take a look here. A lot of maps to show you. This is the 06 GFS at noon today. Now, there's the shortwave energy. It's uh, coming through Baja in the southwest down below that beautiful day today. Uh, the sky should be sunny and, uh, again, a, a very nice warm-up. I think clearly we'll reach the low 70s for places like Birmingham today since uh, we're starting off the day in the 40s. I think we're using uh, 72 in the forecast package for today. Lots of sunshine, clearly just a, a gorgeous day, much like yesterday. All right, tomorrow, here comes the uh, shortwave energy approaching, and uh, down below that at midday, the surface low is near Wichita Falls, Texas. And then by tomorrow night at midnight, this run a little deeper, the surface low is near Paducah, Kentucky, down to 1,000 millibars. And uh, at that point, there could be some pretty active weather just northwest of here. All right, we'll check some of the severe weather parameters. First off, instability. This is the buoyancy of the air, the ability of air parcels to rise. Cape, convective, available potential energy. This is available or uh, uh, valid tomorrow night at midnight. And the better instabilities are still northwest of here in advance of the storm system with the uh, surface-based capes approaching a thousand joules over the uh, Mississippi Delta region. And then by Friday morning, there is some surface based Cape here. This is Friday morning at six o'clock. Uh, the Capes in the 250 to 500 joule range. 
Helicity, this is the veering of the wind with altitude, and this is in the lowest level, zero to one kilometers. This is midnight tomorrow night. The better helicity values are a little north of here, but still that is very much sufficient for rotating updrafts. And then by Friday morning at 6 o'clock, the helicity uh, peak is well to the east of here. This is the STP, the significant tornado parameter, at midnight tomorrow night. Uh, very significant numbers over Tennessee, down into northwest Alabama and Mississippi. And then by 3 a.m., the numbers are coming down here. Uh, clearly, there's sufficient helicity for isolated tornadoes, but really at that point, we think the whole thing rolls over into a squall line with the main issue being damaging straight-line winds. We'll look at the RPM and see how it uh, portrays this thing in terms of timing. This is midnight tomorrow night. And there's your squall line approaching the shoals. In advance of that, there could be a few discrete, uh, you know, cells that would bear watching. That would be where you'd have the greatest risk of any uh, tornadoes would be in advance of the squall line. Along the squall line, obviously, the main threat is damaging straight line winds. All right, this is 3 a.m. Friday after midnight tomorrow night. The uh, squall line is in northwest Alabama. 6 a.m., it's basically coming through Birmingham. Uh, and then at 9 a.m., it's well to the south, running from south of Atlanta down to near Columbus, Georgia, and Phoenix City, Alabama. And at noon, it's all over. So it seems like the main window for severe weather, midnight to 6 a.m. Friday, uh, the main threat would be damaging straight-line winds. We can't rule out the chance of an isolated tornado, so... Looks like we'll be burning the uh, midnight oil in the weather office. All right, for the weekend, uh, Saturday looks fine. A beautiful day. Should be sunny with, uh, again, low 70s likely. And boy, look at the energy Sunday. The, the GFS is clearly stronger now with this uh, shortwave, and that's a, this, this will be a more powerful system coming in here early next week. Down below that, the surface low is developing uh, near... Oklahoma City, and that's well under 1,000 millibars. The Gulf is wide open. We think there'll be some showers on Sunday, becoming windy and getting awfully warm. The uh, GFS runs the uh, high up to 77. Boy, look at that uh, shortwave. This is Sunday night at midnight. Now, the GFS is clearly faster on this run. It might be too fast. Uh, the surface low is way under 1,000 millibars near Chicago with potential for severe weather all the way down to uh, Memphis and Jackson. And then Monday morning at 6 o'clock, it's coming through here. Um, and then by noon, it's over. So if this is right, this would be a Sunday night problem. But again, don't be shocked if it slows it down a little bit. But whatever, that is a very dynamic system with potential for uh, all modes of severe weather. And again, there's no way we can resolve this system now. We have to get the system tomorrow night out of here before we can focus on that. But just be aware it's out there. And then Tuesday of next week, it's all gone. And uh, again, the runs are not as cold as they have been. Uh, this would get us down, we think, in the low and mid-30s maybe. We could be close to a freeze Tuesday morning, but we warm up into the low 60s and uh, Wednesday looks like a nice day as well. So Tuesday and Wednesday look dry. We'll check the end of the forecast. This is the uh, 10th of March. The westerlies are farther south, and that's a pretty cold-looking vortex over eastern Canada. And by golly, if this is right, of course, this is voodoo, but that might be close to some icing problems over the uh, Tennessee Valley. So, yeah, we got more cold air to come, no doubt about that. But, of course, the cold snaps in March don't last as long and they're not as severe. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video here by 3.30 or so today. And if you're local to us, we invite you to watch us on television this evening. ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day and God bless.